And so today I'll be discussing on arthroscopic PCL aversion of fixation. So this is exactly how I feel. I, I was pretty sure that the show of hands is not going to be in my favor at all. And arthroscopic PCL avulsion fixation is not something that everyone would want to consider. Probably this is how I would like this debate to end where some of you would at least be convinced with the fact that if you want to go arthroscopic, why so? Probably not in all cases, but what is the rationale or what is the thought process behind going arthroscopic for fixation of this PCL avulsion fractures? We all know that if you look at an avulsion fracture, your instability protocols demand that if there is a big fragment, you can do an ORIF if required. A small fragment, you need to look at instability and depending on that, you will take a call whether to fix it or to reconstruct it. When you need to do an arthroscopic PCL fixation, what you need to be aware is the posterior anatomy of the knee. That means the anatomy of the posterior septum. Once you clear the septum, the entire posterior compartment becomes one single big compartment for you to work. And that allows you to push the neurovascular structures ahead. You can see the entire compartment with the PCL fragment and its insertion very well. And it allows you to get an anatomical reduction. So if you look at your pre-op imaging, this is how it would be. This is pretty much how it would go in into fixation. Exactly what Shiri showed in the anterior ACL fixation. This is an arthroscopic PCL suture bridge fixation. I wouldn't go into the technical details because this is a debate. What we need to find out is that which fixation technique is better. If you look at literature, there are various other ways of arthroscopic fixation as well. You can either use an endo button, you can use an anchor, you can do a single tunnel technique, you can do a double tunnel technique. So there are multiple ways to, to build the cap. But then which technique is better? And that's where Sotnil is going to debate on me. But if you were to look at evidence-based medicine, and this is the latest systematic review which is, which is in AJSM, and you know the impact factor is quite high for AJSM, over, over 28 articles were, were selected, more than 630 patients were reviewed, and this is what they had to say. If you look at the two groups, that is the arthroscopic group and the open group, the IKDC score was nearly more than 13% better in the arthroscopic group as compared to the open group. And it's not just about the functional outcome. The clear advantage of the arthroscopic approach is that you can treat concomitant lesions. And I'm glad that Shiri showed his video because there was a meniscal tear in that ACL avulsion. There is no ways you can go posteriorly as an open reduction and you would fix that meniscal tear again doing a supine arthroscopy or open procedure. So effectively you are leaving a lesion which is completely unattended to which is going to cause symptoms in that knee eventually. More than 10 years back, Dinsha had published this paper at Issacos for which he was awarded and here he clearly showed that your outcomes are probably similar but what is more important was that intraoperative concomitant lesions were as high as 28% and six of his patients of open approach needed a revision surgery eventually to take care of the concomitant intraarticular pathology. You would all agree a percentage of 28% is a significantly high percentage to let that injury being unattended to. There are tons of papers in literature where they talk about open screw fixation versus suture fixation. Biomechanical studies also say that at initial point day zero fixation, the strength is similar. And the advantage of an arthroscopic technique is associated injuries. So one of the things which have changed in my, in my management protocols is I just don't rely on the CT scan. If it's quite evident for me that there is a PCL avulsion, my patient gets an MRI because that dictates if I have to do an arthroscopic or if I have to do an open. So the questions that need to be answered here is, one, how easily can you access the fragment when you go posterior either as open or as arthroscopic? Second, your all, the worry which is there that is your close proximity to the neurovascular structures. Third, what do you do if you have a thin avulsion fragment? Are you then going to get the patient lateral and then do pull through sutures and then again bring them on the anterior aspect? And lastly, as we discussed earlier, the intra-articular pathologies which are there. So in conclusion, in my hands, I'm pretty sure that all of you would agree to this, that 
techniques might not be superior to each other but my indication for an arthroscopic repair is one if there is a thin avulsion fragment and second if there is an associated intraarticular lesion either in the form of a meniscal tear or a cartilage lesion or an osteochondral loose body lastly those patients who insist on avoiding metal work and this is not because i am an arthroscopy surgeon but the thought process is again that if any secondary surgery is required even for that matter if you want to go ahead and think about a, a tkr say 30 years down the line you don't want that metal work hampering your your outcome at that point of time when you are managing these fractures remember creating an optimal biology and tensioning of the ligament is matters the most with that i rest my case and i'm sure that sapnil has lots to say about it but uh, over to you sapnil